My name is Danielle. My name is Cassidy. We love you, Glamma. Oh, I love you too, Glamma girls. Hi everyone, Glamo here. Welcome back to Made with Love by Glamo, where everything here is always made and taught by me with love. Today we are going to be making a nice comfy chunky cowl or a neck warmer. But before we get started, I wanted to let you know the name of the nail polish color that I'm wearing. It's a gel nail polish and it's in the color Ballet Shoes. And I also wanted to let you know that I know it's been a while since I've actually made a crochet tutorial and there's been a lot going on. As many of y'all know who um, follow me at Facebook and Instagram and who also follow me on my Glam It Up With Glamma channel, you know that I've been really busy um, working on a 250K challenge that I was doing at bodybuilding.com. So I've been trying to do a body transformation and it's a 12 week program that isn't over until April 3rd so I'm still trying to transform my body and that's been taking up a lot of time. I've been uh, getting into bodybuilding or weightlifting and eating healthy and in the middle of that I think in the seventh week, the beginning of the seventh week which was a couple weeks ago about 16-17 days ago my daughter Finesse had my baby Glamma Princess Petrova. So yeah, she was born and that actually set me back a couple of weeks from my bodybuilding challenge. But I'm going to be getting back into it real soon. Anyway, I'm so excited that baby Petrova is here. Yay! <laughs> she is such a cutie. So there's been a lot going on. I've been helping finesse with the baby. But you know what? She is such a pro at being a mommy. You wouldn't even know that she's a first-time mommy. She's awesome at it. So yeah, we are so, so, so in love with that little princess. <laughs> Alrighty, guys. So let's get into the tutorial. I will let you know what you will be needing for this project. Yarn. 9.00 millimeter hook, which is also an N. A pair of scissors. A tapestry needle and buttons. Alright, let's get started. Okay, so to get started we're going to leave a little bit of a tail for weaving in and we're going to make a slip knot. Okay, and now we are going to make a chain. Okay, so yarn over, pull through the loop, yarn over, pull through the loop, yarn over, pull through the loop, and we're going to do this probably for about 75 chains or so. When I come back, I'll let you know how many chains I made, okay? Alrighty, I'll see you in a bit. Okay, so I'm back, and now what we're going to do is we're going to yarn over and we're going to make double crochets. We're going to make rows upon rows of double crochets until the neck warmer is as thick as we want it. So first we're going to count down four chains, one, two, three, four, and we're going to insert our hook into that chain, yarn over, pull up that loop, yarn over, go through two, yarn over, and go through the last two and there's your double crochet. Okay, so we're just going to keep making double crochets all the way down the chain till we get to the end and that's where I will meet you back here. So I'm close to the end here and I wanted to show you what it's looking like. It's got a nice 
finishing edge and the reason I'm getting that nice finishing edge is because I don't know if you noticed in the beginning where I picked up two strands of yarn of the chain rather than just that top loop right there what I do is I pick up that one and that strand and I insert my hook right there at that point where there where those two strands of yarn meet so right there see that yarn and that yarn strand I insert my hook here it's a little harder to do but it's well worth it so see we're picking up two loops yarning over picking up that loop yarn over go through two yarn over go through two and the reason I'm talking about that is because this does give you such a nicer finishing edge and it makes your project a lot sturdier and it tends to not stretch when you do it this way let me show you what it looks like the easy way you would yarn over you would pick up just that top strand of the chain and you'll see that it doesn't have quite the as nice a finishing look as the rest see and so because there's a big gaping hole there it's going to let your project stretch overly stretch too much and so this gives it a nice finishing look as well as makes your project sturdier so it's up to you how you want to do it but I was just letting you know that that's how I'm doing this project and it's going to make it so much nicer nicer finishing edge especially if you're making this for a family member or to give as a gift or to even sell you want it to have a nice looking quality to it okay so I'm here at the end here's my very last one and like I said it's a little harder to get into but it's well worth picking up that top loop as well as that back loop all right and so there's my last double crochet of the foundation row and so now we're continuing on with double crochet so we chain three for the height of a double crochet okay and now we're going to turn our work around <clears throat> and we're going to yarn over and we're just going to continue we're not going to go into that stitch because that's where our chain is coming out of so we're going to go into the next one picking up both strands of the chain of the V pick up a loop yarn over go through two yarn over and go through two and a lot of people even though three is the height of a double crochet I notice that a lot of people like to just chain up two so that they don't have that gaping hole so it's up to you how you want to do it let me show you what that would look like if we only chained up two okay so there's two I just took one out so there's two and then we would turn our work around <clears throat> and still make a double crochet into that next stitch and this is what it would look like so it's completely up to you how you would like to do it um, you can do it like that and it's not going to make any difference it's not going to really um, you might think that it would make your project you know kind of bunch up but it really doesn't do that so if you want to do that by all means do that um, so yeah I think I'm going to go back and let me see how will I do it yeah, maybe I'll just leave it like that since that's the way it is right now I did want to mention though that if you do decide to leave yours like this as well um, when you go all the way down this row and then return and come back this way your last stitch is going to be that second chain see there's one chain two chain so you might want to put a stitch marker there because you're not just going to put a double crochet into that stitch when you're coming back this way you're also going to chain into that top of that chain two okay because if you don't do that then your work will start veering that way so just keep in mind that if you're chaining two you're going to chain you're going to double crochet into the top of the chain two if you're chaining three you're going to chain into the top of the chain three because that's what gives you a nice 
um, corner or a nice um, edge there or else your work will start going like that and you'll start making a triangle. <laughs> Alright, but the proper way would be to chain up three for the height of your double crochet. Alright, so now let's continue on with double crochets all the way to the end of the row and that's it guys that's how super easy this project is we are just going to make rows upon rows of double crochets and i haven't quite um figured out how many rows i'm going to do yet because this is my um this is my test one <laughs> so i haven't really made myself one first um but I think I'm going to make it until it is about 10 to 12 inches wide. Okay, so I almost finished without having to start a new skein of yarn. So this right here is about 8 inches from here to here. And this is two skeins of yarn. Unfortunately, for just one, two, three, four, five more stitches, I'm going to have to go into my third skein of yarn just for these last few stitches. <laughs> this is 11 rows and I'm gonna end this row here and stop there. Okay so I made it to the end and to end your work just chain one, leave yourself a bit of a tail so you can weave that in and that's it. Pull it through Snug that down and get your tapestry needle and weave that in and now I am going to sew some buttons on. So I haven't sewn the buttons on yet. I'm probably not going to do that on camera because everyone knows how to sew a button on. You can either sew your button on with um, yarn or with just regular thread. Whatever size button you got just make sure that your needle goes through the holes. But that's what the finished um, neck warmer or cowl should look like and by making mine 8 inches wide I wanted it to be able to have a little collar if I wanted to so that once you're indoors you don't if you don't want the uh, neck warmer up by your neck you can fold it down when you go outside you can fold it up nice and snug by your neck to keep you nice and warm so that's what it should look like when you're done but let me show you where you will sew your buttons on. Basically, this is just the whole length of it. So you see, you're just going to fold this over. And on one side, it doesn't matter which side of your scarf or of your neck warmer, you're going to space the buttons out evenly, however you would like to space them out, whatever it is to your tasting or to your tasting, <laughs> to your taste. So I like them about, about an inch, yeah, that's about an inch, about an inch or so spaced out. And then once you've got them sewn on, then you take the other side of your um, neck warmer and you're going to button it in between the stitches. You see in between, you see those big uh, spaces between each double crochet? Just use one of those spaces right here you're just going to space it evenly and you're going to button your cowl and so that's what i mean by that's what it'll look like once you are all said and done this is what it will look like buttoned up yeah so wasn't this just super duper easy if you don't know how to sew a button on basically all you do is just thread your needle um i'll just try to talk you through it right now in case you don't know how you would just um, thread your needle, bring the needle up through the hole, bring it back down through that hole, and you can either do it once or twice or three or four times, however many times you want. If I use yarn, I usually just go in once or go up once, come down, and then I just tie a knot back here. Um, if I use thread, then I do it four or five times, and then I tie a knot in the back. But that's how you do it. It's super, super easy. Alrighty, guys. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I sure had fun teaching you this super, super easy, easy tutorial. Um, there's nothing to it. You basically just made a rectangle um, and uh, just sewed buttons on one side and then brought the other side over and that's it. Yep, super easy. Alrighty guys, until next time, 
Um, I'm not sure what my next tutorial will be, but I'm sure it'll be good. <laughs> it'll be something that y'all have requested. I'm not sure if it's going to be a sweater or a baby dress. If I do a sweater, even if it's for an adult, I might do it in a baby size and just show you how to measure it for an adult or for a toddler or for a child. Alrighty guys, I love you so much. Don't forget how much I love you. Don't forget to love yourselves and everyone you come in contact with. Alrighty, bye! Thank, Thank you, you for, for watching, watching our Glamour's channel. channel.